Living in the Past is a Turtle Mysteries of Azeroth and Everlook Broadcasting production. This is Living in the Past, your Everlook Broadcasting Company weekly show about all things Turtle, Mysteries of Azeroth. Today is Friday, February 16th, 2024, and I'm Dan, your host for the next hour. I say I'm I'm the host, but the the show today is actually going to be dominated by a an interview that I did with Rograg. Rograg Fishlayer, as many of you should know, earlier this week, um, he and I sat down and talked about the new roadmap for turtle and i'm gonna be honest i i plan for like 15 minutes of us going back and forth and talking and whatnot uh it, it came out to almost an hour <laughs> i'm going to try and fit as much of that interview in the show as i can i don't think i'm gonna be able to fit it all <laughs> We just, we ended up, when you put two people in a room who like to talk and like the sound of their own voice, uh, you might, you might have a problem. <laughs> so while I say I'm the host for the next hour, I'm more like the organizer at this point for this, for this episode. It's a really good interview. I, I had so much fun with it. I love whenever I can sit down and talk with Rograg because... While, while we may come from different points in the broadcasting world, um, we, we really enjoy sharing those perspectives with each other and going back and forth. Um, and and we're, bo- we're both from kind of the same the same area, so we, we have some stories <laughs> to share. Um, anywho, back on topic here. For the show today, we're going to start out by talking about the roadmap. I, I took a week off last week. It was my birthday. I, I wanted to just... You know, have some time to myself, uh, spend some time with friends and family, and I didn't get a chance to talk about it yet, so I really want to spend this first segment talking about the new 2024 and 25 roadmap for Turtle that came out last week. Um, the other thing I want to talk about here is our music for today. Um, it is, it's going a little bit into the past, a little blast from the past almost, but it's also a lot about what I listened to growing up as as I played Warcraft 3 in World of Warcraft. Um, it, it, re- it really kind of goes to the heart of where a lot of my musical basis comes from. Uh, and, and it's that, that almost kind of like mullet rock from the 80s. So you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get into it. Uh, anywho, let's dive right in because, oh boy, do we have so much to talk about here. The roadmap. The roadmap that we have. Oh my goodness. It goes into 2024 and 2025 plans. And they, they are a lot. So starting out just right off the bat. New primary profession and class changes incoming. Now, we knew about the Karazhan part two, part two if you will. Um, we knew Karazhan 40 Man was coming. That is tier 3.5, according to this document. But what we didn't know was coming here very, very soon was a new primary profession? Question mark? The class changes and the alternative tier sets, that we knew was was on the horizon per the interview I did a couple, almost over a month ago now, actually, with Acolyx. Um, talking about the class changes, the class change council that's happening right now, and everything else going on around that. Um, the 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 new pro- the new primary profession though has me has me a little little curious. Um, moving on though to the next phase, um, vanilla dungeon update is probably the one that has me the most curious. In this, they say new bosses and areas, which means they're going back to vanilla dungeons and. Adding more. How? <laughs> um, I, well, I, I, that, okay, that's tongue in cheek right there. The how is very tongue in cheek. But I, I'm very curious as to the process 
for this? How are they going back and actually looking at, okay, where can we add stuff? What are new areas? What are new bosses that they can throw in? Um, is the the Scarlet stuff that they've had kind of sitting in the wings that we've all been like, when are they using this this stuff that you can do in Tyr's hand? Um, is that associated with it in some way? Also on this, they're adding faction leader loot, which I think me I think means don't quote me on this, but I think means you kill a faction leader and you get loot. What? 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 Really? That's that's going to be interesting. We'll see how that works. Um, in in my interview with Rograg, I ask about the economy update because, as we all know. Vrograg likes his economy <laughs> and he has some really interesting thoughts. I, I'm actually, uh, that was probably part, one of my favorite parts of sitting down and talking with him because he has so many thoughts on the economy, how it works and how he measures it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. There are a few other points in this. Um, the reduced add on dependency user interface update. I'm actually kind of curious about because I, I don't know a ton about that. I'll be honest. I'm a little. I'm a little dumb in that in that regard, but that's okay. Uh, we're moving into 2025 now. In 2025 updates, we have not only Grim Batal, but Grim Reaches, Baylor, and Northwatch Ridge. So Northwatch Ridge speaks to me as part of Northwatch, which is uh, in the Barrens. But what <laughs> is this going to be? Dungeons. Are, is this is this a whole new uh, invasion fleet coming in? Is, is this uh, a Kul Taras navy landing? I, I'm I'm curious. I, I want to know what Northwatch Ridge is. Uh, of course, I'm going to spend so long exploring the the Grimbatol zone, Baylor, um, which was a Stromgard island settlement for a while. I, I'm. I don't know. I know. I don't know the direction that they're going to be going with all this. But obviously, Grim Batal is going to be the big forty-man raid that they're going to hit us with in 2025, and a whole new tier of content. But the supporting content is honestly what I'm even more curious about. And then going deeper into 2025, we have more new zones coming, and we're going into Quelta Loss. So. The Eversong Wastes and Zulaman. It sounds like they're not going the, the same direction that TBC went with Eversong at all, where, okay, so there was a, in, in, in TBC, there's that strip of, of scourged land that goes through Quel'Thalas, but that's kind of it. In this Eversong Wastes, that name says to me, okay, it's decimated. <laughs> there there isn't anything there that is worth saving now um ever song way speaks to me of the entire region has been scourged there they can't go back there there there's nothing there of worth also they're putting in zulaman um, but they're classifying it as a zone versus a raid so very very much once again Turtle is taking things in a very different direction from TBC and where TBC decided to go. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for that. And then the big curiosity, the big question mark here, not the burning crusade. <laughs> that was really, that was really funny. That was really well done. Uh, Turtle Wow 2.0. What on God's green earth is Turtle Wow 2.0? They don't provide any information here. It could be some kind of expansion. It could be a kind of world revamp. Actually, um, Rugrag has some really interesting ideas on this uh, in our in our conversation. It could be a completely new client. <laughs> It could. We don't know what it could possibly be. They give us 
no hints <laughs> on this whatsoever. I, I've I, I've looked at the graphic and I've tried to find some kind of detail on this with it. I can't find I can't find anything. So whatever Turtle Wild 2.0 is, that's that's like the big question mark here. So I'm I'm, cur- I'm curious to see what ends up coming of this. Obviously, looks like it's probably at the end of 2025, according to the roadmap. So we'll see if that holds. We'll see if that stays consistent. We'll you know we'll see we'll see. Anywho, that was the big roadmap that came out for Turtle uh, last Friday. I believe I actually tweeted out. Um, after Acolix posted this, I'm trying to take a break. What are you doing? <laughs> it, it, very, very well done, though. Wonderful speculation com- coming out of this. Now, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get to our first break here because we have a lot of interviews with Rogue Rag to fit in here. I'm going to try to fit all of it in, but I do stipulate if I can't fit it in, um, I will post the full version of of the interview to the YouTube version of this episode. Uh, So even if it's shortened at all on uh, on the radio broadcast version, the YouTube version over at the Everlook Broadcasting Company YouTube page will have the full version of the interview. (laughs) It's probably going to stretch the episode out quite a bit, so that's fine. That's okay. Um, Music today. Music today. Uh, I, I, I mentioned Mullet Rock, and... That's that. That's pretty pretty consistent with the stuff I listened to growing up back in the Midwest. So we're going to be starting out with Eddie Money and and uh, Two Tickets to Paradise and Night Moves by Bob Seger and the Silver, Silver Bullet Band. Um, scratch that and reverse the order, though. We're going to be doing Night Moves first and then Two Tickets to Paradise. Uh, and then after our interview with Rogue Rag, we're going to be playing the same two artists, Take Me Home Tonight by Eddie Money and Beautiful Loser, one of my favorite songs of his of all time by Bob Seger. That's our music for today. I, I'm not fitting in a ton of music because, again, <laughs> I want to fit as much of my conversation with Rogue Rag as possible. So we're going to get right to the break. No mess, no fuss. Enjoy the music. We'll be right back talking with Rogue Rag Fish Slayer right here on Living in the Past. The musical tracks for this episode have been removed due to YouTube copyright. To listen to the full episodes with music, tune in to Everlook Broadcasting every Friday with the in-game radio widget. Welcome back to Living in the Past. My name is Dan. It's good to have you here on this wonderful Friday. For our second segment of the show this afternoon, we're sitting down with the news orc himself, the one... The only Rogue Rag Fish Slayer famous on the internet on YouTube.com. Rogue Rag, good afternoon to you. After that excessive opening and introduction, how are you today? Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here to talk to all the fine uh, folk out in Turtle Land. I'm doing just swell right now. I'm enjoying uh, a nice uh, non-alcoholic beverage. It's a little early in the day for that. But uh, yeah, just having a good time, enjoying Turtle Wow. Um, yeah, it's great. It's great to be here. Now, the reason I wanted to bring you on is two slash threefold. Um, the first reason, kind of the biggest one that we covered in the first segment uh, of today's broadcast is the roadmap that we got last week. I didn't have a show last week. I was taking a little time off. Um, So this is kind of my first chance to really see how the community is reacting to it. And just to, just to start out somewhere on this conversation, um, you've, you've obviously taken the time to look at it. What are your initial thoughts on the turtle? Wow. Roadmap. My initial thoughts are that the, turtle team is putting a a really high level of content out there and when i say that i say that because um i've been on the server long enough to know um sort of the initial pace of progression 
when like a new small dungeon would come out when uh, they added something mm -hmm. i certainly got used to like a certain rhythm and i would also kind of understand because certainly when i originally joined turtle Wild, that the team was smaller the community was smaller so when i look at the development roadmap i mean part of me is just incredulous i'm like they can do all this because <laughs> this isn't like this isn't like oh hey yeah sometime next year we're going to add like two dungeons this is multiple raids within um a couple years span and there's going to be class changes new gear and then like they're also changing like back end stuff like they're going to have a, a toy collection tab they're going to add pvp stuff and i'm just like you guys sure you can do that and and i and i don't mean that as a slight to them i just mean that like that is a really big endeavor for them to undertake so it honestly at times it it, it feels bizarre it's like it's like really they're gonna do all that all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and, and uh, just to highlight how long you've been around i'm not calling you old or anything i promise no it's um, like I, I i own that <laughs> uh you actually just celebrated the other day, two years uh, of your guild being together on Turtle, right? That's yeah, that's that that's correct. Um, I was on the server uh, a little before that. I didn't first join the server, and then uh, I was like immediately in Blackwing Guard. Uh, I started technically. Um, I guess it would have been late in the winter of 2021. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, my wife and I, uh, who in game and on all my content is known as Murag, uh, she and I were playing classic TVC at that time. And uh, we were starting to get disillusioned and we had looked around to other private servers. And I'm, you know, there's plenty of Blizzard bashing to go around, so I don't need to rehash we, that. Yeah, but, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go there yeah. right now. <laughs> but, um, well, you know, one of the places we, you know, because we were shopping around, one of the places we looked around on was Turtle Wow, and we really liked the community. Um, but uh, at least back then, the the learning curve of okay, this is an old client, and like I don't understand all the peculiarities of this place. Sure. Um, was sure. A, was at least back then was a little bit of a turnoff, like honestly. Um, but uh, we came back in earnest a couple months later, and. Uh, I think right around then was when they first had the hardcore challenge. It was something that my wife and I really wanted to try out. We thought it was a great concept, a fun idea. And it was a good thing to do like in partners, you know, if you have like a good friend or like a partner with you to you have do your, that you have your squad, content. you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so we're like, Oh, that sounds great. We'll do that. And um, yeah. So early 2022. Um, so like maybe uh J january ish um i remember this because on my first character i have on the server he still has one of those little baby marks of fortitude that you can only get during the nax uh, uh opening event oh i i keep it on him just to i be have like, only no, no. heard rumor of this yes yes um so uh yeah that's that's sort of my i, I guess you could say pedigree but like the community has changed over time. Um, certainly this last year, there's been so much going on. But um, yeah, I've I've been a longtime community member. I'm certainly not the oldest member uh, by years on the server. But uh, I do consider myself a, a sub 1K uh, Turtle Wow enjoyer. <laughs> you, you, and, and Blackwing Guard is pretty... Well, well known to say the least around around the community and pretty much everyone's heard yeah. of it. yeah um you know i will always speak the praises of blackwing guard they are very accepting of uh anyone who is uh playing they they are much more accepting to casual players and uh they will engage in whole levels of content and um they also are very inclusive, which is something that's also really important to me. So with all those things put together, Blackwing Guard was a perfect match. Plus, way back then, there were precisely one North American raiding guild. So mm -hmm. um, when they popped up, uh, my wife and I were like, oh, cool, we can go do raid content. There's a 
there's a group for me. <laughs> so, so, you know, the rest was history there. Um, but yeah, Blackwing Guard's been around a while, and you know that because they have a guild base. Yes, I, I've always been. So I started on Turtle just over a year ago myself with uh, with my Shadow Priest, and okay. when I when I first joined, I uh, I was trying to figure out like, okay, are guild houses a thing? Are they not a thing? Because I hear people talking about them, but I have no idea how to access them, and I've never seen one. What is going on? And then through joining a couple different groups and learning more about them. I, I hear they're kind of like legacy um, legacy stuff and you can't do them anymore, but the guilds that do have them, it's really awesome because it's a free hearthstone to some other wonderful places in the world. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, the older community was much more role play centric. Um, and I don't think that's really something that's controversial to say. Um, guild houses were really initially uh, meant as a place where people could meet to do RP and also to congregate to do like content together. Um, as the server grew, and certainly last year, the growth was so exponential that the people in charge of making the guild bases were just like, if we keep saying yes to every request, Azeroth will just be one gigantic guild base. So when... they had to they had to make a choice. They were like, all right, we need we need to put a, a stop to it right now. When when the servers were capped out max population in in the five digits oh, and had a queue going on, imagine all the guilds requesting requesting housing at the time. Oh god. Yes. Uh, but I will say, um, Back when they made the official announcement, I, I think I was doing the news when they made the announcement to, like, officially say they weren't going to be in guild bases and that they had a plan for guild bases involving the Caverns of Time and instanced uh, guild bases, I believe. Uh, I haven't heard much about that plan in particular. And coming back to the roadmap, yes, I don't see it on the roadmap. That's so. that's fair. So let let me let me ask you a few things about things I see on the roadmap because I want your thoughts on them. Um, sure. I the big the big thing that sticks out for me is obviously the new zone and raid combinations. So in twenty twenty four, we don't we don't have a ton. Um, obviously, the forty man Karazhan is happening. Which I I love uh, I love seeing that, um, but we're also getting a vanilla dungeon revamp. What do you think is involved in the vanilla dungeon revamp? Well, if I had to guess, because I don't have any particular forward knowledge or reconnaissance, on that's this okay. We are guessing thing. here. That yes. that is totally okay. fine. My my honest guesses are that they are going to be updating them so as to encourage players to do them who may not do otherwise. So this might be uh, some level of gear tweaking, but also knowing the team, I really wouldn't put it past them to also put new bosses in them or maybe like a small new wing of a particular dungeon. I, I think that is probably the scope of what they're going to do because the subtext, the actual subtitle is new bosses and areas. So that's, that's sort of my read on it. Um, just to encourage people to continue enjoying the leveling content, which I think honestly is vanilla. Wow's greatest strength mm -hmm. so keep getting people to enjoy the best part of vanilla and encouraging them and allowing them to see that content through new lenses i think is is definitely a step in the right direction sure uh and then right right below that update is one that i assume you might have panicked about just slightly which is the economy updates that are going to be happening oh. uh this year um as, as many of, of us know who enjoy your news programs you are big 
on the economy of each server. So yes. do you do you dread these economy updates, these nameless economy updates that are coming? Are are you worried what might be there? Are you excited for what might be there? Where where are you at with those? I think any economy update is good. And the reason I say that is because economy in a game is essentially where the game and the metagame meet. It's a constant um, struggle back and forth between those two forces. People want to make the most amount of, of gold for, for WoW. Sure. While sure. also doing the least amount of content, the most efficient way. And there's always this, this tug of war. And the economy is a place that can not just be exploited, but can also be, I guess you could say, patched or fixed <laughs> or or messed with by the turtle team. So because the the old world convention of Vanilla WoW's economy, much of it is very well established. So because of that, the 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 metagame, if you will, of the economy is very stale. When they shake it up, it becomes a different way for players to interact. And uh, so anything they can do to change it, I think is interesting. And yes, I, I do a lot of in-depth reporting on the Turtle Wow economy on all the servers, but um, I don't I don't shy away from more interesting stories about the economy. And, and kind of kind of. I'm going to say leading on those coattails conversation wise, we did just have a pretty, I'm going to say a pretty major change to not necessarily the economy itself, but how, um, uh, cool, uh, um, buffs last through death, which is yeah. an indirect, but major effect in my opinion on the overall server economy. Um, with hopefully at some point here, mongoose, potions dropping in price yeah please god let them drop in price um but it, how did how did that affect the economy so far now that we're a couple weeks into into that change from the end of last month the cooldowns through death change how did that how has that affected the economy in your opinion so um it's interesting you ask this um i just did my my live news Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday and as part of that i had uh four separate herbs i was tracking i actually have also that slide pulled up in front of me so to answer your question uh, at least specifically about uh, mongoose right um since the change mongoose has really not changed that much so and that's because plague bloom hasn't changed that much either which is interesting now also to give context to the wider economy change, it wasn't just that um, most, I think almost all elixirs, scrolls, and some other buffs last through death now. Mm -hmm. um, it's also that the team has officially come out and said, um, Tithe DKP is also banned on the server. Yes. Um, yes. And 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 that also plays a huge part into the scarcity of herbs because uh, honestly, the amount of herbs available is generally um, limited to you know how many nodes are available. So there are specific herbs like plague bloom, uh, mountain silver sage, and ice cap to some extent, where these herbs are just straight out hard to get because you can't just go into an instance and generate nodes so this oh that's scarcity. a good point okay yes and that scarcity is why certain herbs have been sky high as things like tithe dkp and a larger than normal fully progressed rating population exists on the server at least currently so because of that um you'll also see things like dream foil is like bargain basement discount prices it's like 30 silver whereas um because i actually have data on some of these things from way long ago um dream foil used to hover around like 80 90 silver and it's like gone down since then 
by about 66%. And that's because so many people generate those nodes. And that's, going that's per instances. Dreamfoil, correct? Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. exactly. Per, per Dreamfoil. Like, um, I think currently the price of Plague Bloom is around uh, somewhere between 2 gold 40 Oof. or 2 gold 50. And that's oh, God. per Plague Bloom. And that's an average. Now, I mean, the team has done things like adding Plague Bloom nodes to uh, Stratholm, I believe. And that, that makes it so that you you can generate nodes, but they're not ones you can just simply walk up to either. So it didn't solve everything, but um, yeah, there's um, there's just going to be a problem when you have that many high-level raiders where consuming is sort of the, uh, the thing you do for raids. Um, making things persist, though, um, has widely affected the herbalism market, at least, and it has come down quite a bit because there's just less of a demand. You really only need, for like a two, three hour raid, you only need two to three mage blood or, or mongoose, mm -hmm. which is different than if you have an unfortunate wipe, now you got to buff up again. If and, if you're a yeah. uh, if you're uh, in a guild or a group that has come over to do progression on, on turtle. And yeah. you're looking at the prices of of all of these consumables. You you're you're wondering if you made the right choice. That it, it can be really rough. Yeah, and I would say um, some things are very reasonably priced, and some things are not. Um, and it's uh, it's certainly not as bad as some servers where RMT is either allowed or just you know ignored mm -hmm. and so i i mean it's it's small comfort to those who have been on turtle wild for a while They're like it's okay guys it's not as bad as you know uh swipe to win servers <laughs> but but it's um it's still a situation where any any sort of thing they can do to help players who want to engage with that content have less of a um less of a barrier to entry is is just generally a good thing it is it it is i i strongly agree with that now looking to 2025 on the roadmap we see some interesting new things on here the first th and, and we kind of knew about we knew about this already but grim batal and the zone around it grim reaches um that's coming in Baylor, which is an island off the coast of of South Shore, um, generally considered controlled by, or was previously controlled by, um, um, oh, I'm forgetting my my human nations now. Oh lord, Who's the old one now, Stromgard. There we go. Previously controlled by Stromgard. Um, what? Where? Where are your thoughts as someone who does raid still regularly? Having a new tier of content, suddenly tier four happens. Where where are you at with with that? Are you excited for it? Are you worried of of the difficulty level? Um, where are your hopes and dreams? My hopes and dreams are that whatever comes out is fun. I generally most people who have done content with me um even like while i'm in like a raid or something will notice that i spend a lot of time goofing off rp walking to the next boss emoting after something cool happens i as long as it's fun i'm down um also what's really fun for me even though uh you know i'm known as the news orc um i am certainly not as well versed on the lore um as you might be, but I've been learning so much stuff about Grimbatol. Like I only <laughs> knew that it was a spot where red dragons were because I needed red dragon scales. But since then, I have just been hearing all these crazy. I'm like, oh, this is where the wild hammered dwarfs were at some point. Cool. So like, what, what is that all about? And then like, I learned about some cursed city. It's great. It's an opportunity to discover stuff and learn things. So I'm down for it. As far as like, the actual raid itself and the gearing 
I treat it just like everything else in Vanilla WoW. It's going to be janky. It's going to be weird. And then it's going to get fixed. And it's still going to be janky and weird, but it's going to be a janky and weird that we're used to. And then it's just going to be another tier of content to do. Like most things that happen with content, you enjoy it for a little bit. And then the content locusts come and go. And then it's just a thing. Um, I think my only real concern for it is for uh, larger guilds who try to have like, you know, hey, on this night, we're going to do this raid. On this night, we're going to do this raid. The more raid tiers you add, um, it might get to a point where you have to start like excluding some raids because uh, many of the larger social guilds have a whole range of players. So um, I could actually see a future where if you add the Karazhan, which is 3.5, and you add Grim Batol, uh, we're running out of days of the week to run raids. <laughs> like, that that's a serious concern. <laughs> um, so from a logistics point of view, I think this will challenge the larger guilds to um, continue growing and also look to work together with other raid groups. Because I think one thing that happened, uh, people who do Emerald Sanctum regularly, uh, people are finding that because it doesn't scale, mm -hmm. you, you, you need as close to 40 as you can get to do it. And there's just, uh, you know, our guilds are already all the way progressed through Nax. Emerald Sanctum is not that big of a deal. And the, it's just harder to fill those rates. And so like, that's, that's a serious issue. Like if you're adding two more 40 mans, I, I hope that, uh, the culture around rating can start to shift a little bit to be like, it doesn't need to be every lockout, you know? Sure. Uh, it might, might need to be a change, but, uh, I'm also generally just, curious about some of the other zones like you just told me more about Baylor than i ever knew except for that i think Baylor is the word that dungeons and dragons used to make a balrog because it was like copyright proof <laughs> that's the only time i've seen the word Baylor in front of me that's okay fair enough um so uh, i'm like cool it's an island that i didn't know that i mean i could i could go i could i could probably go hours going into detail about Grim Batol and I, I cannot tell you how many people have gone like the lore nerds are going nuts over Grim Batol. I don't know what wonderful. it is, but it, it's wonderful. It's like a feeding frenzy. Um Grim Grim Batol is such a like a storied history throughout the Warcraft franchise. Like going back to when it was introduced in Warcraft 2. Like there's so the you know, like Stormwind obviously has a huge background to it as well. Yes. Um, there there are other locations that have this kind of major background to it. Grimbatol is one of them. Grimbatol is 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 big. So the fact that they're putting it in and giving it a subzone as well and putting in more detail, that's really exciting. What is also exciting though is, and this is hinted at a lot in the new the new High Elf Capital when you're just talking to people, but the Eversong wastes. And, and Zulaman, and, and finally getting to see what happened to Silvermoon with that. I want to know what happened to Zul'jin. I I mean, I mean we're getting Zulaman, well, okay. so we're well, well, going to find he, out. He, here's here's the thing that some uh, players may not know. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, I, I might forget the names of tribes, but but the forest trolls on the Horde side, like they have like a little village that's uh, northwest of Stone Talon. And uh, when it was first implemented, Zul'jin was there, like one arm and everything. He was hanging out. You could do quests for him. And he had like the little voice lines. Mm -hmm. It was great. And then uh, I think it was 1.16.1. He just disappeared. So, And I was like, oh. I, I will say, and this is me being pedantic and very exact about this stuff. They're actually two tribes. So the, okay, the tribe that's good because I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, so the tribe that is still with the horde from the previous Eastern Kingdom's activities is not the Revan Tusk. That's the Amani. That, okay. That oh, that man. was. And I that's was the right tribe that Zildjian belongs to. 
Okay, so so Zuljin belongs to the Amani, which would explain why, because I remember there was a long quest chain you could do to like, because they were like, hey, can we join the Horde? It'd be really cool. And then you go talk to Thrall, and Thrall's like, oh yeah, sure. We just need, you know, unanimous consent from all the leaders of the Horde. So, you know, Thrall's like, I'm down. And then, uh, I can't remember the name of the troll one. Uh, Vol'jin? Uh, Vol'jin? Uh, Vol'jin was down. No, no, I'm um, sorry, Zul'jin. Yes. Uh, I always mix up those two as well. But, and then, uh, K- Karen, Karen was cool with it. And then you, you, you talk to, um, uh, Sylvanas. She had a lot of opinions about that particular tribe of trolls. I'll tell you oh, what, yeah. she was not happy. Um, and she's like, hard no. Uh, there was more to the quest, but like, I was just like, huh, there's a lot of story I, the, I either had forgotten or like, just didn't really think about. So, um, I would just like to see what's going on in Zulaman. Maybe see my old friend. Maybe he's not up to something bad this time. Oh, I, no, I they're up to push... something bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No. Okay, oh. so here's the thing. Um, uh, Zul- Zuljin. Zuljin, not a good person. <laughs> um, well, Amani, you know, he's been through a lot. Amani are generally cannibals. And well, I mean, yeah. The... They're bad. They're really bad. Well, um, I mean, can, cannibalism is just something you do after murder. Plenty of the races do murder. Like, why is it a big deal? I mean, that's fair. Um, I would, I would go into detail as to, <laughs> um, you know, the the slaughter that the Amani have committed against the against Silvermoon. Back in the day, from from history, from time immemorial. Um, well, I'm, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! If we're going that far back, Dan, yes, I want to tell you yes. something that Blacktooth Grin told me that I think is true. Oh no! All what, lands, what, what, is all lands, what is it? What is it? All is lands it? are troll land. They told me all lands are troll lands, and I think they're technically correct. I don't. I don't know. I I think that's true. I haven't verified it. I would. Yeah. Oh god, it's yeah. hard to dispute. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. All of a sudden, who's the bad guy now? How the turntables. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it wouldn't be too hard to make Zuljin a bad guy. I mean, he's it's not just the uh the fact that his culture takes part in cannibalism. It's also like the Oh yeah, we like to go into elf villages and just kidnap people and torture them. I'm like, "All right, well that See, then you're kind of like closer to like the forsaken scale of evil. Then you're kind of you're kind of over there, and I'm like, ooh, that that's not a good look. You it know, was... like from a PR perspective. <laughs> PR perspective. It there was also a, and this is going back well before, like long before Warcraft One, like yeah, thousands of years before Warcraft One. Um, the proto-human nations there the Arathor nations essentially um, yes. had to combine with the high elves, with the Sind- uh, the um, Queldorai, I almost said Sindorai, Queldorai oh, don't say that. Um, to stop the Amani, which was a much larger tribe with the, which the Revan Tusk was a part of, from killing everyone. I'm not exaggerating. They were trying to kill everyone. Well, I mean, it's hard to excuse that, and I, I, I wouldn't try, but, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, journalism work, and so I try to be as unbiased and as neutral as possible, so I can listen <laughs> to all sides, and, um, you know, still technically, they could have just been mad about the Sundering. Like, they could have just been mad about that. I mean, have we checked? Uh, have no, we checked? I didn't check. So... Uh, you know, like maybe they're like, you know what? I have a good feeling that those elves were involved in the Sundering, which I think they're correct in, right? So not only were the trolls right in attacking the elves for Sundering apart Azeroth, they were maybe justified in preventing further calamities, which if you really think about it, I think the elves had their hands in a lot of calamities around Azeroth. Um, at, so back, back in the day, I had a running joke. Um, yeah. Elves, in general, knight or high elf, 
were responsible for everything but two major calamities in all of Azeroth. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I mapped this out. There's two are things you that happened Medivh that wasn't human? their fault. Are you, you must be counting Medivh as a human then, right? Yes. Because okay. he is a human. He's not an elf. Well, in game, his character model is actually a night elf. That's true. He does. He does use the the ske- the night elf skeletal model. That's true. I don't know why he does that. It makes no sense. It could go deeper if you keep checking. He is not an elf. <laughs> no, he's not. I will fight you on this. No, no, no. I, I I agree. Actually, um, and and to be fair, I think even if you want to put that at Medivh's feet, um, I think Awin Awin however you say that name gets the assist and she definitely was human true so you're you're referring to the opening of the dark portal correct yes i still blame the elves on that because yeah yeah the burning legion only sent the orcs at us because they didn't get to have the magic that the elves were like we're all magical now yep it's true. So uh, they still get they still get the blame. Any anyway, going back to the roadmap. One more question Sorry. for you, and it's kind of like <laughs> the burning question. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we all have because it's not the burning crusade. What the crap is Turtle Wow two point So I have been thinking about this a lot, and. Not just because I think it's a a psyop by Acolix to <laughs> gaslight all of us. <laughs> I actually think this really is a thing. Um, but I I for anyone I, I know this is a radio show for anyone who has a time or opportunity. I invite you to look at the development roadmap image. It is a rather large image, which means you can zoom in quite a bit. And um, I did this on my stream, and I I'm like pretty conspiracy pilled about this the image in the lower right is a version some kind of a picture of razor hill although Mm -hmm. it looks somehow different the reason i bring this up is because my theory about what turtle wow 2.0 is and this is informed by what i've also seen in other places with content they've come out with is that it is going to be a continuation of the vanilla world. So the reason I bring up the picture is, well, that's what razor Hill looks like after, you know, some amount of time, like some amount of years, maybe Felwood starts getting cleansed. They've, you know, the Druids there have been doing a lot of work and there's already examples of that in game. Um, I'm doing a deep dive on the Hateforge Quarry, which is a continuation of the Dark Iron Dwarves, uh, particularly this Shadow Forge clan. I've been learning a lot about it, but yes. um, yep. Turtle Turtle Wow loves doing continuations of stories, making the world more alive. And when I see Turtle Wow 2.0, the reason they're not saying not the burning crusade is because it's just the natural progression of what will happen in the world Mm -hmm. Um, to make it a living world. It it needs to change over time. And so I don't foresee it as like a up. They went into grim Batol and they woke up. uh, What's his face. Who's that big. uh, Who's the big black dragon that like uh, death ended the world. That one. Yeah. Yeah. So I think canonically, Deathwing might be in there, but um, I don't foresee them sundering the world a second time uh, via Deathwing and completely changing the world. But I think the storylines of every zone, even every subzone, there's some consequence to what's going on. And I think the team is pointed it on the docket that they want to they they want to show that that story is continuing. So that's you're, my theory. You're you're expecting there to be world like a progression of the world itself yeah absolutely i mean someone's got to win the centaur like genocide war out in desolus someone's got to win it eventually right the only (laughs) 
the only ones winning it are our enchanters going for for a couple of those late game patterns i think yes. that's who's winning that <laughs> yeah exactly and i mean like does rexar ever get to wherever he's walking oh, he's God. been walking for a long time like where where is he going He's a hero of the horde. He he should find like does he find a house? Does he get a house? Does he get like a like a tent somewhere? It's not is, about the uh, destination, Jack. Okay? It's about the adventure. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, uh, okay, think about this too. Did anybody in the scenario circle like actually do anything about the bug infestation or did like the just hundreds and hundreds of raiders that have been killing Cthulhu and every evil creepy crawly in there just have no effect. I I, I don't think they're going to close the gates of Anchorage. Okay. But I do I, gotta, I do think there's w- world expanding chances in there, you know? Fun fun fact though, no one's killing Cthulhu. No, that's 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 true, right? Cuz that's just a a projection of him. We are gently poking him in one of his eyes and saying go back down to your prison and think about what you've done. But we well, like we've barely yeah. we barely scratch Cthulhu. Um the and unfortunately the the Blizz devs end up kind of forgetting all a lot of what they wrote about the original old gods, but our our strength as a group of 40 people isn't enough to anger an old god. We are screwed. Yeah. If one of those, if one of them fully unleashes themselves from their prisons, we're done. It's, it's, we're done. Nope. You can, you can just, we close that book and we say, you know what? <laughs> we tried. We tried. Goodbye. <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, as a big fan of Lovecraftian oh, yeah. horror. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the fact that we can even interface with Cthulhu at all in any conceivable way and have that make sense is uh, almost antithetical to the fact of, of, of him being a Cthulian monster. Oh, yes. Oh, I, yes. You, yes. <laughs> you know, you get me. I, I'm glad that you get it. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Everyone should walk out of that raid with like a drooling idiot of a raider because that's all that's left. Yeah, a husk, a husk of a player. But you know that wouldn't be fun. No, I, no, it's that's true. Um, I, neither here nor there, though, about about this conversation. I've, I, 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 we've gotten so off topic here. Um, the other things I want to talk about here, while we have some time at least, is yeah, I wanted to talk about you. I wanted to talk about Vrogreg. How everyone always asks, you know, who is Vrogreg? How how is Vrogreg? But not a what is Vrogreg. Um, uh, yeah, so, why is Vrogreg? <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to get a little more information about you on the record here more than anything else. So, Oh, yeah. I, I, start out by just telling us a little bit about how you started. Why did you start doing the news in the first place? Why, why do you obsess about uh, economics? about this game why why do you do what you do so um you know we had a a bit of a like a a pre-production where you kind of let me know some of the things you wanted to talk about and i have been thinking about that i've answered this question i've realized to other people in in different ways but i would say the most concise way to explain it is that there was some point um early last year in my journey in turtle wow where um i was really kind of stunned with how much the community was capable of whether mm-hmm. it was like making uh hd mods or uh, custom add-ons uh all these role players throughout the entire world with these complex deep backstories all this stuff going on around me all building the community. And um, I, I was thinking about what my role in, in that community is. Um, mm, I'm, someone okay, who, okay. I'm someone who believes that if you benefit from a community, if you can, 
you should try giving back to that community because doing that will allow others to enjoy the community as well. And um, one of my favorite anecdotes from that is um, right around then, one of my uh, longtime guild mates and someone I've, I've raided with Koyu, out of the blue, I, I did not ask him to do this. He just made like a stunningly good portrait of Frograg. And, okay. and I, I, okay. I was, I was, I was blown away and it was right at that moment. I'm like, wow, there's so many talented people around me. And, and I was super grateful for that, sure. but it actually inspired me at that moment to actually ask myself, I'm like, well, like, what, what am I good at? Right. And uh, I can talk forever. Um, I have a BA in English. I'm, I would say at least somewhat competent with writing. And um, I have some journalism training. So I'm like, I wonder if I could like put those skills to use to help the server. And where I started was uh, I part of the journalism thing is that I, I just have like an unquenchable curiosity about how things work, what makes them work, why they're there. So every week when there would be a change log, I would always go right to it. And I would see like these little notes. And, you know, it would be something like changed how the white stripe tiger moved. And then I would go on the GitHub and I would see like a 3000 word long back and forth about like this white stripe tiger. Like when it moves backwards, you can actually like teleport dimensions. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's really simplifying a very complex story. And I'm like, I, I find that fascinating. So that's literally where I started it from. I'm like, I want people to know what the what the turtle team is doing. I want players to know what's happening on the server. I want people to be able to connect to each other and I want to continue building that community. So that was really the, the launching off point for me to to do uh, the turtle wow news. You want you wanted to have that that gather point more than anything else that you mentioned that it's it's some place that we can communicate in a way that isn't just a flash in the pan it sounds like yeah yeah and and i i do i do want to answer your question full here too <laughs> my obsession with the economy genuinely comes from the fact that i am very like almost disabled bad at math every time i have to do like something with math I have to like put it in a spreadsheet. I have to write it down. I have to look at it for a long time. So when I tried to be <laughs> like, huh, I'm doing all this work about uh, with uh, trying to figure out how much consumes are going to cost next week. I'm like, I bet you there's some people out there that would really like a breakdown of what's going on in the economy. Plus, I'm already kind of doing it myself. So it, it grew from that. So it, because it, of my ignorance, it really was your own your own asking of the question, how is this relevant? How is this going to affect me? Do I need to worry about this? Do I need to prepare or understand something else about this? And it kind of just snowballing from the sounds of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, even from there too, um, encouraging people to use tools at their disposal to help themselves. Like, um, a really great guy I've come in contact with is the uh, owner and manager of the uh, WowAuctions.net, where I was yes, getting all you my data from. almost every week. Yes, uh, yes, and and um, I I'm like people should know about your thing because for me it was like indispensable, and I'm like hey I I'm I'm doing this thing. He actually reached out. And we have like a like a pseudo partnership. I, I don't know. Like he actually advertises my show on his website, which is really cool. Thank you, Dogo, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like it was one of those situations where it was like, I'm, I'm doing this, but people should know how to do it for themselves too. And if I can make it more digestible and more approachable, then that's great. That helps everyone. Interesting. Okay. I, that, and that kind of goes along with your theme of informing and educating. That that really kind of helps tie a lot of that in together where it's not just about you making a news show. 
so to speak, because there are people who want to just produce shows. It's about community building. It's about education. It's about informing. Does that is that a fair assessment? Yes, yes, and and I think you're definitely getting at one of my overarching themes. Mm-hmm. And while I, um, you know, I strictly try to stick to you know uh, topics that are basically just in game. Um, a personal thing that always matters to me um, is 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 media literacy sure. and okay. people understanding how. Uh, effective and ethical journalism should work. And I've been able to have a lot of really good constructive conversations about that with people in the community to be like, um, yeah, I'm I'm not going to make a news story about one of your guild members who did a bad thing. That's that doesn't uh, that does affect you, but that's that's very drama related. And I'm trying to do things that are impactful to the community at large, um, dispelling myths about the difference between um, what ethical disclosure is and isn't, mm-hmm. um, how th- facts that I bring on my news show, um, how I verify them. And if I say them, I tell you if they're verified. These are things that I think it's interesting because we have an international community and there's lots of different perspectives on the role of journalism and media. So it's been great to get those perspectives and see how all these different cultures interact with my uh, conception of journalism and media, which is very Western. So um, exposing other people to that and and learning has been a really great thing for me and, and is always uh, in the background of my mind of what I do. I, I really like teaching about media literacy. So first off, I appreciate the heck out of that because um, I don't think people think enough about how they consume information. Information is a commodity, just like yes. anything else. Um, it can be good. It can be bad. It really is how you approach it and how you care for it. Um, so the fact that you go into, you're going into so much detail, just thinking about uh, a, a semi news related news uh, broadcast you do um that that's really satisfying for me um and it, it's so important that people think about um but kind of redirecting to the broadcast itself uh and and what you do on your youtube page um how let's see if i word this properly how did you decide on the composition of the broadcast i think that's the right word i want to use and did how did it change and evolve over time? Because obviously, any broadcast starts somewhere. You you put notes down on, on on a sheet of paper. You put a clock together. Okay, you have a starting point. Where did where did the news with Rograg Fishlayer start? How did it start? And how did it evolve over time? So it started. Um, a little bit after that experience I had with um, my guildmate making me a, that picture, and and I wanted to do something, and so uh, I I did what I would call the Turtle Wow News Alpha, and I only released it to members of like my rating team, essentially people. I remember who have been you talking, talking about this. It's still floating out there somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, um, it is. It's on a unlisted link. Mm-hmm. Some people do have access to it, but um, I essentially put together some images and uh, made a video. And uh, I, I do want to point out that I have pretty much slowly over time taught myself all these skills. I, I, um, I didn't, I never had any formal education about video editing, audio editing, any of that. Um, but with enough determination and watching YouTube videos, you can learn <laughs> anything. That's YouTube fair. kids. Um, so um as a starting off point, uh I just got OBS. I recorded myself walking through Ashara, I threw some slides up, I talked about them a little bit, and I got some feedback. And some of the feedback was that like, hey, you know, um 
maybe be a little less meandering in what you're talking about and you know maybe maybe try script which was a very fair criticism um and then when i went back to the drawing board with it i i think it was right around then i uh i had watched um barney beekeeper barney 64's uh and garage three part series mm-hmm. or right around then and um i really loved how that was done with machinima by the way i didn't know it was called that until like later and then people said oh it's just like the old machinima videos i'm like huh what yeah what is that? um machinima isn't really a word that's used anymore at least in my I, experience I, <laughs> I i i mean like it i guess it I, my understanding of the word is that it just means like in-game puppetry. Very, very it, much so. It, yeah. Right. Right. So, um, anyway, uh, after that experience I had with, you know, some internal testing, you could call it, I'm like, well, maybe I could try, uh, a script, right. And I could try to make it like, maybe look like a new show because the concept of it is that like well i'm trying to give people news and information i should mm-hmm. make it like a news show so um i started i started there like i made a script i put uh after i would record the audio well, my the first way i did it i would record the audio and then i would play the audio while not recording it but then capture the machinima or the like the animations of my character Vrograg speaking all of them. Mm -hmm. And then I would overlay images and I just tried to make it look like a new show. Uh, And then I just continued over. I I pretty much did them weekly for a long time. There was like only a week or two. I skipped some. Uh, I just kept refining the process. Like, like literally that's all it was. And I think in nine or 10 months, I only missed a week or two. Sometimes I had two videos a week if there's something special going on. But uh, yeah, it was literally just repetition and practice and then finding out what did work, what didn't, what people liked, what people didn't. And I just kept doing that. That Okay. Um, not Not asking like to go full under the hood, so to speak, but when in regards to your workflow and you were mentioning a little bit of this just now um what what programs do you use to set everything up so you mentioned you know rec- you record some of it uh in OBS and whatnot so how do you actually record the footage and put it together what what software do you use so the majority of the news programs i've made like 90% of them recently i've been experimenting more mostly that's because i just want to try different things cuz i enjoy learning new processes and stuff but um, generally most of them, my process is this, I, um, literally most of my time is script writing. So I mm-hmm. write a script that is literally verbatim what I'm going to read. And then, um, I should note that also behind the scenes, I'm also, um, doing like ethical journalism work where I'm like interviewing people, asking them if it's okay, if I use their name, like all that kind of stuff is going on too, but uh, oh, yeah. the production. So after the script's written and all the journalist work is done, I write the script. I then go into audacity. Mm -hmm. I will record my audio. um, Generally do noise cancellation, do some compression. Um, After that, I have a clean MP3 to play around with. Uh, Then I'll go in game. And I will. uh, Grab Vrograg and another character who acts as the camera person, if you will. Sure. Yeah. The the camera person is alt Z. So I don't, uh, can't see any of the UI HUD and I just put Vrograg in a spot and then I play the section of audio. I want to play. I do the animations after that process is done. Then I have like this file that, uh, just has animations. I don't Mm -hmm. even use the audio from that because that, that isn't usually good quality after it's been, re-record no again. That, it's just the video component right. yeah 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 and then i'll um i started for my videos i used i had like an old copy of like vegas 16 a friend of mine <laughs> like gifted me yep and um boy uh in 2023 uh that program was showing its teeth 
but uh <laughs> it's uh I up, I upgraded at some point, but I learned most of my video editing through Vegas. I, I know there's other programs out there, but um, again, since I'm all self-taught, I didn't want to have to self-teach myself again. So uh, at some point I upgraded to 20, but I would put the video file on one track, put the audio on another track, mm -hmm. and then I would do what's called uh, making assets, where um, if you think of like a news show, you'll usually have uh, an image in one corner. Uh, so I would just make an image or maybe I'll have like another video to play. And uh, yeah, I'll run it like that. Um, over time, I had things like uh, tickers go through, yeah, which I just yep. learned, I learned how to do that. And I'm like, oh, that makes it look like a news show. This would be great. Um, the, um, the only other real big innovation I had was a friend of mine, uh, Sonic, who is a bit of a bit of a coder um got the api to wow auctions so i was able to like automate all my data gathering because uh for, this is for the market uh, market uh market watch stuff and what i used to have to do is literally cut and paste the data from there and put it into a google sheet oh and then hope google hope google sheet could just deal with the fact I had like 10,000 lines and be like, okay, tell me what the average was and then make a chart. Um, so that wasn't sustainable. No, 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 God, no. But, but it worked. I made it work. Um, so yeah, it's been a real shoestring operation for what is essentially just a hobby. Cause I, <laughs> I, I ain't rolling no dough from this job. I'll tell you that much. That, I mean, that's fair. You are, your channel is partnered though now, correct? Uh, I, is what is it oh you mean like like i get ad revenue yes i well i can't mm -hmm. say how much i i think i'm not supposed to say I'm, i don't get much i can say that i get enough to to laugh at it um you you're technically a, okay i'm i'm bringing a little of my day job into this technically you're allowed to talk about your ad revenue and what is shown on your dashboard but you can't go into your ad sense and, and share any of that that is private oh okay yeah, see, uh, again, this is the joy of being self-taught. Um, I just like saw them say, like, don't talk about things. I'm like, OK, well, who cares about like <laughs> my five dollars of ad revenue I get every month? I'm like, woo. Yeah, no, it's and it really it depends upon the length of video. I'm not going to go into this yep. right now because, again, um, this is my day job knowing these systems. So I will save that for when we are just talking about it. But needless to say. Uh, the fact that you do have access to those things and you've built up this community and this regular production, um, consistency is the key to success, uh, especially on YouTube. So um, congratulations on you to, for building this up and doing doing your job as well as you do. I, I mean, I, honestly, I, I know it sounds really corny or whatever, but uh, honestly, it's just been fun. Mm -hmm. Like... Um, the best way to put it is like, at some point, I remember I was in Turtle Wow Discord general. And I, I just like was met, uh, answering someone's question and someone had asked the question like, so I don't get it, Vrograg. Are you a journalist? Are you like, just like a player? Are you RPing as a journalist? And my answer to them was yes. Like, perfect. All of, perfect. This, all of this is, <laughs> all of this is just fun. Like, it's fun to like pretend I'm a journalist by being a journalist. It's, it's fun to like do RP and also play the game and like make videos. Like the fact that anyone watches them is like still mind blowing to me. The fact that people will like show up to my streams and like actually be curious about what I'm up to in game. Like, I think that's great. I, I think it's awesome. And it just makes it so fun. So uh, yes, consistency is key, but I, I will say that what really helped is having so much support from the community, right? Um, and so it, it sort of feeds in on itself, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and yeah, it's it's just been great. So um, at times it's certainly stressful when like I have these <laughs> imagine. It, it's funny because like there is no deadline. Like I literally am the editor in chief. So like I make the deadline but I still feel like I need to do something. <laughs> the, the, the stress that comes from that 
you are your own boss, so all of your success rides or dies on you. It it can be very overwhelming. Um, oh, yeah. But it, again, it feels like you've struck a healthy balance with it. And to to really end on a positive note on this, the strength comes from the community. The oh yeah that that drive that moving forward um a a big positive uh, of the turtle turtle wall community is just that we we love what each other does um so the fact that that's really exemplified with what you do and the amount of information you've brought to the table and education you've tried to you've tried to to uh, help people with um all the better absolutely all the better um before we close out here. Bro, Greg, I, I always like to give people a chance to, you know, if they want to add anything else, if they want to say anything else about what we talked about. Also, feel free to share your platforms at this point. Where can people find you? Okay. I'll answer the last question first. <laughs> That's fair. I, I, I did are. double up on you there. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Um, So, let's see. On Reddit, I am Bro, Greg, Fish Lair. On uh, they don't call it Twitter now. X or Twitter. We're still uh, calling Vrogra- it Twitter. Please. I am. I am Vrograg Fishlayer on Gmail. I am Vrograg Fishlayer at Gmail dot com. Uh, on Discord at Vrograg. It's really easy to remember. Uh, you can find me there, and of course, my YouTube channel. Get this at Vrograg Fishlayer. Wow. Um, yeah. The the um. What are they? Oh, what are they called? They're, is that is that SEO? Is that was that what is that what that is? Um, SEO is something a little different. But okay. I, well, I applaud your. I'm effort. easy to find. I'm, yeah. I... <laughs> no, that is good. That um, is that's good. Creator ecosystem development is what I call it. All right. Well, nailed that. someday I'll learn what SEO means. But as far as shoutouts go, <laughs> SEO, um... <laughs> SEO just means search engine optimization. <laughs> but what? But what does that mean? It depends what platform you're talking about, actually. I'm glad you asked. No, oh, no. It's 90% Google. 90, 90% Google. But other other platforms <laughs> handle it a little, different, a little different, a little differently. Anywho. All right. Um, so other people I'd like to... Uh, uh, things I'd like to shout out is uh, I, I really... I don't have any... Uh, I do have a project I'm working on now. Um, I've tried to put less stress on myself to do, uh, the weekly news the same way I was doing it. And, uh, in respect to that, I'm working on a, uh, a dungeon guide. I'm currently working on one for hate forge quarry. Oh, that's so, fun. Do, yes. So, uh, keep your eyes peeled to the, uh, YouTube channel. Um, uh, I don't know when I'll be out with that. I still have a lot of work left to do on it, but, uh, so you can stay tuned for that. But as far as, uh, Things I'd like to shout out, um, of course, my wife, Murag, uh, everyone who's a part of the Turtle Wow News Discord, which is essentially people who have information or are willing to emotionally support me when I have breakdowns. <laughs> uh, love you, people. Um, also, shout outs to Blackwing Guard. Happy second birthday. And uh, the Turtle team, um, although I am not part of you, and we are many times at odds because that's the adversarial relationship journalists have with authority. Um, you guys do great work. Your heart's in the right place. I love you guys. And uh, you know what? Generally, Dan, thank you for also making Turtle Wow content. It's good not to be alone. <laughs> it's good. It's good to be here. Um, oh, yeah. It's great. With that, with that being said, though... Um... It's been it's been a long conversation. Uh, chances are the live version of this is going to get edited down a little bit. We'll see. Oh, um, dude, I, do you know how many interviews I've done? I mean, I I've done interviews and I'm like I'm like yeah 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 okay yeah we'll just chat for a little bit we'll chat for a little bit and then I have an hour and a half and I'm like oh brother this is supposed to be like a five minute snippet. I I know that feeling. It's better to have too much material than too little material because you can fix one direction. You can't fix the other. (laughs) I have learned that the hard way. Yes. It's very, it's very hard to do with machinima too. (laughs) I've had, I've had to do that before where I'm like, I'm like, huh, I didn't capture enough of my character moving. (gasps) Okay. Can I get the frames to line up just right? So no one's going to notice. And then you spend more time trying to, 
duct tape it together mm-hmm. tightly enough where if you just went back and recorded more, you'd yep. be done in a half hour. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's <laughs> it, it's 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 maddening how simple the solution is when it's just like right there, but then you want to do it your way. Yeah. So what I might do is uh I might put a a a shortened version of this and this will be included on on both versions. A shortened version on the live show and an yep. extended version. People can get the extended version of this interview if you go over to the Everlook Broadcasting Company YouTube page where the full version of this will be will be available. Is is that good community growth whatever you said? Yeah, sure, why not? We'll say yes. Yeah. We'll say yes. Nice. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> but Great. honestly, it's yeah. it's the power of me doing separate edits for the live broadcast, which people catch in game and a different version of the show for the YouTube page. Yeah. <laughs> this, oh, man. Uh, the I, magic of editing. <laughs> I cannot tell you too how excited I am that I actually like, I didn't, I didn't think Murag would say yes to that radio thing. So fun fact in our third segment here coming up after the break, after this timeout, uh, we're actually going to feature that Valentine's Day radio play right here for our final segment of Living in the Past. So everyone, make sure you give your thanks to Vrograg. He's been doing this since before pretty much any of us. <laughs> Long before I was even around. Yes. Appreciate the I was the heck doing out it when all of you were babies. No. Well, mm. <laughs> I don't know about that one, Chief. But no, I don't. Try. I don't. It's amazing how 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 little I know still. Oh, oh, please. We're all we're all learning here. <laughs> but please exactly. go go appreciate Vrograg. Check out his platforms. Vrograg Fish Slayer. No matter where you go, I actually didn't realize you had a Twitter, but I've fixed that now. Um, I've gone on it at least three times. You've never posted anything on it. I don't. I don't know what to say. Oh, I, you know what? I could say my tagline. Remember. There- <laughs> the deadliest weapons knowledge. <laughs> there you go. That that's I get like the perfect, three likes. That's the perfect close there. So, Vrograg, thank you so much. After the break, we're going to be right back. A little bit of music is going to play. And then we're going to have our big Everlook Broadcasting Company Valentine's Day radio play. Stick around. More coming up right after this. The musical tracks for this episode have been removed due to YouTube copyright. To listen to the full episodes with music, tune in to Everlook Broadcasting every Friday with the in-game radio widget. Welcome back to Who Will the Arrow Hit Next? The one and only way for love rat fools to find their true significant other. I'm your host, Quickie O'Brien. Azeroth's true messenger of love. Many have found their mate with the help from my mythical bow and arrow already. And today is no different. One lucky lovebird will be able to choose from an array of contestants. But like with many other things in romance, there's a catch. Using only their voice, they gotta woo this fair maiden into their embrace. How thrilling! Without any further ado, let's switch the spotlight over to everyone's object of desire. Hello, it's so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Athuna Vale. I am 8,526 years young. I love to hike out in the great outdoors, take an occasionally decade-long sleep, and do some gardening in my free time. I'm a druid by profession and really fond of doing water sports in my aquatic form. So uh, that's me. Now 
this is only for our amazing audience out there to hear. Introducing our three darling bachelors. Bachelor number one, a simple farmer from the plains from Mulgore, on his never-ending search to find his perfect pumpkin, Wapo! Hello. Hello. His favorite hobby is taking a dip in the sewers of the Undercity. Bachelor number two, the one and only Fearless Archibald. <laughs> Exiled from his home in Nomergon, this clever little fellow's wit is only matched by his courageous demeanor. Fizzlow, our bachelor number three. <laughs> All right, back to our fair lady. You got three questions to ask your bachelors, after which you got to decide whom to take home. <laughs> oh, I am so excited. Okay, so what to ask first? Oh. I know. Contestant number one, what would your ideal gift to me be? Oh, an easy question. Nothing less than the ripest and juiciest melon from my own garden to you, sweetheart. What a charmer you are. I love homegrown produce. Too bad melons always bloat my skin. There's just way too much water. Ugh. Contestant number two, your turn. What would your gift to me be? <laughs> Amazing. This has been my desire for my whole life. I have to say I am positively shocked. Lastly, to you, contestant number three, your gift to me, will it surprise me? There's only one thing you'll ever need, my love, and that's my patented dream o -matic sleep mask for the dream of your century. With its certified in soothing electrical shocks, it will zap you into a slumber that's beyond anything of the emerald dream. You're a feisty one. I like that. Your gnomish folk are always so full of charm, and the last one I met even complimented my hair. Okay, lads. This is some promising contestant, if I do say so myself. The only thing between you and the love of your life are a few more questions, so keep them coming. It would be my pleasure. <laughs> Okay, contestant number one, I've been kidnapped by swashbuckling bloodsail buccaneers, and you have to rescue me. How would you do that? These muscles were made to rescue fair ladies. I'd storm in like my life depended on it, and punch the scoundrels with a swift hook to the ground. Do not worry about my well-being. This body is made of steel. <laughs> Wow, this is almost like one of those adventure stories they tell at the campfire. I bet you could pick me up with one arm. Contestant number two. An evil wizard put a horrible curse on me for not returning his romantic advances and turns me into a hideous frog. How would you undo this curse? <sighs> <sighs> What a brilliant solution. You really do know how to express yourself. Now, contestant number three. A selfish organization is exploiting natural resources and trampling innocent baby squirrels in the process. We need to stop them. Any ideas? Don't you worry, my dear. I have the perfect solution for any sort of conflict. My totally not lethal radioactive missile launcher 3200. One hit with that baby and any evildoer bent on disrupting this nature you're talking about will crumble the smithereens in an instant! <laughs> oh. Yeah, that would be effective. Yeah, for sure. These contestants sure pack a punch. Hmm, I can't remember any past bachelor being so... extravagant. I am gripping my non-existent seat in anticipation to see what else they have in store for you. Well, actually, I think I already made my choice. Oh, wow. That's a first even for us. We're only on round two of questions. 
There are still 18 more to go. Are you absolutely sure, young lady? 100%. <laughs> well then, don't tease us any longer. Tell us who's going to be your lovebird. <laughs> it's you, my lovable green goblin. <gasps> You're so chubby and cute and that adorable getup of yours on top of your charm and funny jokes. How could I resist you? Just looking at you makes me want to hug you. Come here, oh, cutie God. pie. Security, get her off me. This is... Let go of me. No, not the wings. They're blow dry. Ah, they'll pinch my cheeks. Security! Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Who Will the Arrow Hit Next? Hosted by your revered messenger of love, Quee Q Petalfeet. Be sure to tune in to the next series of fate-changing questions when it is time to ask yourself once more. Who will the arrow hit next?